Welcome everyone to the Microsoft Word Basic Skills video tutorial. This is video one of three. Let's start from the beginning. This is the screen you'll see when you first start Microsoft Word. Notice you have several options for getting started. If you're returning to work on a document you recently had opened, you're likely to find it listed here in recently opened documents. Note, this is not only a convenience, but can also come in handy if you close a document and forget where you saved it. If you ever find yourself in this situation, don't panic. Just restart Microsoft Word, and if it wasn't that long ago that you had the document open, you should find it here in the list of recently opened documents. If you want to open an existing document, but don't find it listed here, select Open Other Documents. From here, you can open documents on your SkyDrive that are out there in the cloud. And I'll discuss the SkyDrive option shortly. Most likely, you want to open a file that's on your hard drive, flash drive, etc. If so, select Computer, then Browse. And this will open a file log dialog box that you can use to find your file. I'm going to go back to the beginning because for this video, we're going to create a new document. To create a new Word document, you have two options. If you have some idea of what you want, and it looks like one of these templates, simply select the template. This will bring up a nicely formatted starter document. I'm going to close this because we'll be working from a new blank document. To create a new blank document, select Blank Document. Now it's time to enter some text. To enter text, just type it. Remember, don't press Enter at the end of each line. Word processors have a feature called Word Wrap. The word processor will automatically wrap or move text to the next line. If you do press Enter at the end of each line, it might look the same, but it won't be as robust. For example, if I let Word decide when to end each line and I change the right margin, all the lines flow nicely. However, if I hit enter at the end of each line, it might look okay at first, but when I change the right margin, it really messes up the format. That's an important general concept when using a word processor. The concept is, or the important thing to remember is, don't strong arm the layout by trying to put everything in its place. Let the word processor do the formatting. For example, if you want to center text, apply the center command. Don't simply add spaces in front of the text. Again, the two might look the same, but there's a world of difference between the two. If you use the center command and the length of the title changes, it will still be centered. Not so if you use spaces. If you want to be sure the proper formatting commands are being used and the text isn't simply being strong-armed into place, turn on hidden formatting characters. To turn on hidden formatting characters, select this symbol in the paragraph group on the Home tab. With hidden formatting characters displayed, it's easy to recognize when text is being strong-armed into place versus using the commands in Microsoft Word to do the formatting. That's Text Entry 101. Let's save the document now. To save the document, go to the File tab. This takes you to the Backstage. Sounds very exclusive, doesn't it? Well, the File tab, or the Backstage, has options that affect the file as a whole or properties of Microsoft Word. We'll modify properties of Microsoft Word in a later video. The first time you save a document, you need to click on Save As in order to specify location for saving the file. One option that was introduced with Microsoft Word 2013 is the ability to save the document in the cloud to your Microsoft SkyDrive account. It's easy to sign up for a SkyDrive account, and when you do, you can save documents in the cloud and access them from any computer connected to the internet. I'm going to save it to the file system. This is the option that you'll want when saving to the hard drive, flash drive, or even network drive. From here, you can select a recently used folder or browse for a specific location. I'm going to save my document in this CS100 subdirectory. 
The first time you save your document, you want to give it a name. I'll call mine Basic Video Text. The default type is .docx. Notice there's several other options for type. There's a .doc, which is an older file format for Microsoft Word documents. I'll mention that I've noticed some websites asking you to upload a Word file in the older .doc format and not the newer .docx format, which is the default. Remember this option if you ever need to submit a .doc file. Also notice that you can save as PDF. If you save as PDF, I recommend saving as a .docx first because you can't later open the PDF for editing. I'm going to save my document in the default .docx format. Now that we've saved the document once, after making changes, we can simply click on the image of the diskette on the Quick Access Toolbar to save our changes. It's a good habit to save your work periodically as you work. When you click on Save, your work gets saved to the hard drive, which is non-volatile storage. If Word or your computer crashes, you won't lose your changes. Now I want to discuss a few simple text entry and edit actions. Eventually you're going to make a mistake and need to delete some characters. Well, the backspace key deletes characters to the left of the cursor, whereas the delete key deletes characters to the right. Many editing commands require you, require you to select the characters before applying the edit command. You can click and drag to select text. Once you've selected text, you can apply simple formatting commands like making it bold, making it italic, making it underlined, and some others that we'll discuss later. Before I go too far, I should introduce one of the most important commands of all, and that is undo. When you click on undo, it'll reverse your last change. Notice that you can undo and undo. In other words, there's a redo command. Let's continue with text editing. To copy and paste text, select the text, select copy, and then paste. If you want to move text rather than copy it, use the cut command rather than the copy command. I'll also point out a shortcut for selecting characters. You can double click to select a word and triple click to select the whole paragraph. We'll talk more about paragraphs shortly. The next video describes text and paragraph formatting in more detail but I thought I would introduce the concept in this video. After entering text, most of the formatting commands you'll want to apply will either be text formatting commands or paragraph formatting commands. Text formatting commands come from the font group on the Home tab, whereas paragraph formatting commands generally come from the paragraph group on the Home tab. In a nutshell, character formatting commands apply to characters. You'll have to select the characters before applying the command. Here's an example. Paragraph formatting commands apply to the whole paragraph. You only need to place the cursor inside the paragraph before specifying the command. However, if you want to apply a paragraph command to more than one paragraph, select at least one character from each paragraph that you want the command to apply to. That's all the editing commands I'm going to discuss in this intro video. Let me close with a few review commands. You might have noticed we're doing spell check as I type. By default, Microsoft Word checks your spelling and grammar as you type. It'll put a wavy red line under potentially misspelled words and a wavy blue or green line under words or fragments that are potentially grammatically incorrect. It will check as you type, but you can also have it systematically go through your document and look for spelling and grammatical errors. To do this, go to the Review tab and click on Spelling and Grammar. Word also checks for misspellings in context. Sometimes words aren't technically misspelled, but the wrong word is being used for the context. For example, if you type 
You should have been there with their spelled T-H-E-I-R. Word lets you know that you're using the wrong spelling or the wrong word for the context. If you use a word that's not in one of the dictionaries used by Microsoft Word, it might flag a correctly spelled word as misspelled. For example, his app got Sherlocked. Sherlocked might be slang, but it's spelled correctly. To add a word to the dictionary, right-click and select Add to Dictionary. If you accidentally add a word that shouldn't have been added, go to the Backstage, click on Options, Proofing, Custom Dictionary, and finally Edit Word List. From here you can delete the word that you accidentally added. Now that we're mostly done with our document, it's time to print a hard copy. To print your document, click on File, Print, and from here you can see a preview of what it will look like printed. To print, select the printer, check that the settings are what you want, and then press Print. I'm going to go back to the document now because there's a few more features I want to discuss. First, let's take a look at the find and the find and replace command. To search for a string, go to the Home tab and select Find. Enter the word or phrase you're looking for. Notice the list of matches is updated automatically. You can easily walk through the results of the Find command. To use the Find Replace command, click on Replace and enter the word you want to replace and then the word you want to replace it with. And if you're brave, you can click on Replace All or Replace one at a time by clicking on Replace. Word also has a built-in thesaurus to help you find exactly the right word in your prose. To use the thesaurus, right-click the word you want options for and select Synonym. For more options, select Thesaurus under Synonym. Also, while we're on the subject of writing, I'm not a fan of it, but sometimes there's a requirement that you write so many words. Don't waste your time manually counting the words. Instead, go to the Review tab, the Proofing group, and click on Word Count. I have two more features to demo. Uh, the first is zooming in and out. When you write a document, choose a font size based on what you want your document to look like when it's printed. Use the zoom in and out feature here at the bottom of the screen to adjust the size of the document that you see while you're working with it. And finally, the help system. If you forget the location of a command or how a command works, consider looking it up in the help system. To access the help system, click on this question mark. Here, I'll look up the command word count that we just discussed. I never can remember where it's located. And the help system tells me. It tells me that it's on the review tab under proofing. Well, that concludes the beginning video on Microsoft Word features. In the next video, I'll go into more detail on character and paragraph formatting.